way you get a never-ending stream is never-ending raindrops. And drop, drop, drip, drip, each thing we do that, that reflects the heart of the living God shows his presence. Uh, we worship a God who is so big and so glorious and has such a great plan, and we get to walk in that and enter into it. In Amos 5.24, we looked at this last week and the week before, we hear these words, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. And the dilemma we have in our world is that when we look at issues of God's righteous heart and God's desire for justice is so glorious and so big and so powerful, we look and say, how do we do it? I mean, there's, there's such massive injustice in the world, and what tends to happen for people is they end up in one of two places. On one end, people look at the injustice and they see it. And they get so upset and they get so bothered by it, they, they, they get angry and they, you know, they yell and scream, and this is wrong, this is wrong. But in the whole process, they often maybe don't do anything about it, but they're upset. And that's, well, it's enough to be upset. No, it's not. Not if you're not doing anything. And on the other end are people who see the injustice of the world and they're so overwhelmed, they become paralyzed and don't do anything. You see the problem with both these scenarios? <laughs> We're not acting. We're not doing anything. And what God wants and this is the heart of God, is he wants to so capture our hearts by his heart. Because when you become a follower of Jesus, the very Holy Spirit of the living God moves into you. We're going to spend, starting next week for four weeks, in the book of Acts, looking at the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the presence and the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when you become a Christian, moves in, and then the Spirit of God begins to change and shape your heart so you feel the way Jesus feels, and, and you care the way Jesus cares. And you, and you just have to do something. What James says in James 1, where he says, he says, you know, don't be just a, a, a hearer of the word, a reader of the word, but do what it says. Don't, don't kid yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Do what it says. When Jesus lives in you by his spirit, you start doing what God's word says. You start loving the way God loves. You start serving the way God wants you to serve. You start caring the way God wants you to care. And the world begins to change, drip by drip and drop by drop. It's like the great theology that you learn in the movie, What About Bob? <laughs> baby steps. All right? It's baby steps. It's doing something. It's, it's not getting paralyzed with anger, and it's not getting paralyzed with fear. It's taking steps every single day. It's, it's doing something each day that reflects the presence in the heart of God. I have a friend who um, is, 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 I was at his workplace, and we were actually walking across the campus where he works, and he, uh, he's got some physical challenges. He's got some physical, ongoing physical things that make it difficult for him to move at different times, and, and so he, we were walking along, as we're walking along, he sees a piece of trash. So he kind of goes off the path that we're walking on, and he goes over, and, he, and, he, and I could have just kind of reached out and grabbed it, but for him it was a little bit more work because he has some, some motor issues, but he gets, get there, gets the piece of trash, puts it in his pocket, we keep walking, we go buy a trash can, he throws it away. Oh, that's kind of nice. And then we keep walking. And he sees another piece of trash. And I wanted to kind of go grab it for him, but I thought, no, he, and, I, and I saw it, and he went and grabbed that piece of trash, found a trash can, threw it away, kept walking, did it a third time. And I'm, I'm starting to feel terrible now because like, I'm more prone to walk by trash than to pick trash up. And, and oh, that's gross, that's dirty, you shouldn't touch that. But he, you know, and, and here's what struck me. There may be a thousand people that have a bumper sticker that says, save the earth. But this guy picked up three pieces of trash. And those three pieces of trash made a difference. And if all of us just notice the little baby steps, the little drips and drops, what can I do? And we often are saying, well, what can I do? But we're saying, no, what can I do? How can I respond? And my prayer today is that the Holy Spirit will capture your heart. If you belong to Jesus, if the Spirit lives in you, the Holy Spirit will capture your heart and do two things. One, show you where you're already taking great baby steps and allow you to go, good job, <laughs> I'm in it. I'm part of this work of making the world a different place in the name of Jesus. But also to show you a couple places where you can take new baby steps. Because if the thousands of people who call Shoreline Church their church home in the worship center, family worship venue, online, if those thousands of people every day are taking little baby steps, little drips and drops, it will create a mighty, never-ending stream and river of God's presence and God's goodness and God's justice. And that's what God wants. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a political thing. This is a Jesus thing. This is a God thing. We need to have the heart of Jesus. And so Jesus, he speaks these words. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 25. And in Matthew 25, there's this amazing passage where Jesus is talking about the end of time when all people will stand in front of him. He calls himself the Son of Man. 
And if this was the whole, what I'm going to read right now, if this was the whole Bible, you would say this. The way you get to heaven is by doing good things. If this was the whole Bible, it's not the whole Bible. When we read the Bible, we read the entire thing, and the Bible is clear. We get to heaven by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe in him, we put faith in him. He died on the cross, he rose again, we receive his grace. But when we become a follower of Jesus, he changes us. So when Jesus says these things, what he's saying is, the people who truly come to know me, who truly believe in me, who, who have the indwelling of my Holy Spirit, they start living differently, they do things differently. This is, and this is not an exhaustive list, this is some of the stuff we start to do. All right, so look, look with me at, at Matthew 25, Beginning in verse 31. This won't be on the screen, but if you have your Bibles, follow along. Or just listen to what Jesus says. When the Son of Man comes, this is Jesus talking, he calls himself the Son of Man. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, this is the end of time, he will sit on his glorious throne, and all the nations will be gathered before him, before Jesus. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left now listen to this. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Now watch this. For when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, Jesus says, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Now, that's not all the things, but Jesus is saying, you did all these things. Your life was changed. Your heart was changed. And then he goes on to say, the people will say, well, Jesus, when were you hungry and we fed you? When were you thirsty? We don't remember that. And Jesus says, as you did it to the least of one of these, my brethren, my sisters, my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. And he says, now to the ones on the left, he's going to say, Hey, away from me, because when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. When I was, you know, when I was naked, you didn't clothe me. And they're going to say, well, Jesus, when did we see you this way? And he says, when you did it for the, or you didn't do it for the least of these, you didn't do it for me. Now, what's Jesus saying? He's not saying you get saved by, okay, listen, pour your glass of water. There you go, you're thirsty. I'm going to heaven. That's not the point, right? I gave, I gave food to somebody one time. I'm going to heaven. He's not saying we're saved by our works. Here's what Jesus is saying when you don't understand all of the scripture. He's saying when you know me, when you come to the cross and receive Jesus, when the Holy Spirit moves into you and lives in you, you start to change. And you notice what Jesus notices. You feel what Jesus feels. And you love like Jesus loves. And you give like Jesus gives. And that grows in you over time. And drip, drip, drop, drop, baby step, baby step, we start to change. And I'm hoping today you'll look and say, thank you, Lord, for the ways I'm walking in your ways. And thank you for the ways you want to grow me to walk in your ways in new and fresh and beautiful ways. We're talking about justice for all, walking justly, and baby steps that make a big impact. Now, here's a discouraging verse. Get, brace yourself for a discouraging verse from the Bible. Ecclesiastes 7.20. There's a lot discouraging in Ecclesiastes. If you want to get down, read Ecclesiastes. Um, it's, it's, it's really sobering. It's really sobering. It's true. The whole Bible speaks to all of our emotional lives, and this is a sobering one. But in, in Ecclesiastes, 7, uh, Ecclesiastes 7.20 says this. Indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. We're not perfect, but in Jesus Christ, step by step, drip, drop, we're changing, and we're becoming what he wants us to be. The standard for heaven is not perfection of us. It's perfection of Jesus, and he's perfect. He paid the price. He died on the cross. We believe in him, but when that perfect one lives in us, we start to look and sound and act a whole lot more like him. So how do we change the world one baby step at a time? It, it, it's just taking those small steps it's living into it and walking into it and understanding that to live a life of justice, to live a life that reflects the just and right heart of God, where our attitudes and our actions actually change, it costs. Justice costs something every single time. Seeking God's will and God's ways in a broken world will cost you time. It could cost you a reputation. It could cost you money. It could cost you comfort. It could cost you more. It costs something to live like Jesus. And you want to know why? Because it cost him his life. And to follow him means we're laying our lives down. We're living as different kind of men and women and young people. We're living like Jesus, and there's a price. So, 
I want to ask some questions. And I want to give you some examples of how you might step into or some of you are already all engaged in justice and righteousness and glorifying God by loving people the way he loves them. Here's the first question. What if we heard God's call to feed the hungry? What if we heard God's call? And understand, as Christians, we bring, things, we bring together the physical and the spiritual all the time. When you feed a hungry person, if you're a committed Christian, you also want them to know the bread of Jesus Christ. Because you want them to have bread for today and food for today, but you want them to have the bread of life for eternity. Amen? So we don't just say, okay, here's a piece of bread. We share food and we try to share Jesus. Now, we don't say to somebody, if you don't listen to me preach a sermon, you can't have any bread. But when we share bread, we say, can we tell you, can we pray for you? Can we care for you? Can we tell you about Jesus? And so many people who are hungry for bread, listen closely, are also hungry for Jesus. When we give water, we offer the living water of Jesus. When we give clothes, we say you can be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We bring together the, the, the physical need and the spiritual fulfillment of Jesus Christ. This is what Christians do. And we don't force Jesus on anybody, but we offer him just like we offer bread and just like we offer water and just like we offer clothes and all sorts of things that God gives to us. So what if we heard God say, feed the hungry and offer the living bread of Jesus Christ? Because in Matthew 25, we read this. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And the first thing he says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And we ask the question, but what can I do? I mean, Jesus is saying, okay, feed hungry people. What can I do? What's, what's a baby step I can take? What's something I can move into? And I'll tell you, one way you can engage in this through Shoreline Church is through our food pantry. We have a food pantry open twice every week, two chunks of time every week. And you say, well, do people in Monterey need that? Do people actually show up? In 2017, listen to this. And just listen to these numbers. In 2017, you, through your giving, through your serving, we served 3,894 adults, 2,473 children. We served on this campus through our food pantry 6,358 people who Jesus loves. Praise God. And you say, well, but, but, but you know, I, I can't come in the middle of the day on Tuesday or Thursday. Well, right here's a bag of groceries. It costs nine to $10 to get these groceries. Nine to $10. And here's the list of exactly what's in the bag because this is the perfect stuff that people need. And our team has figured this out. And here's it in bigger print for me so I can read it. Here's in smaller print for you. And, <laughs> and, and you go, well, so you, you, could bring, you could get this list and buy some of this stuff and just bring a bag of it. You could give $10 and say, hey, get a bag for me. You can come and help and serve. There's ways you can just take, what's my baby step? I can step into and get involved. That's one way to actually feed people who are hungry. And, and it seems like Jesus is saying, that's what, does, that's what happens when our hearts change. We begin to care about people and we engage in that sort of thing. This is what we do. There's also prayer people that are part of those times. So if somebody's there getting food, we'll all say, can we pray for you? And so many people say, I'd love that. And they may even have a chance to talk and share about Jesus and people's hearts are open and they may come to know the Savior and have the bread that lasts forever. We have a ministry called I Help for Women. They go to St. John's Church and they prepare food for women who are hungry, women who live on the streets. They serve those women. They have fellowship. They talk with them. They pray with them. They build friendships. All these things I'm going to talk about, if you go out in the courtyard, they're at all under those different, you say, hey, where's the booth about this one or that one? You remember your thing and just ask. They'll point you to the right booth. If you put your name down to your phone number or your email, all that will happen is someone will contact you and say, let me tell you more. If you say, I want to know more about that. Maybe that's for me. Maybe that's my next baby step is getting involved in that. So if, if something strikes your heart after the service, go out and check. If you can't do that, just call this week and say, tell me more about the food pantry. Tell me more about I help for women. Feeding the homeless in, uh, on Soledad Street, Dorothy's Kitchen. We partner with a ministry in Salinas called Dorothy's Kitchen. And we have people that go over there and again, prepare meals. And, and offer food to people and sit and talk with them and laugh with them and hear their story and listen to them and pray with them and encourage them and maybe get to talk about Jesus. Because with, with the living, with the physical bread, we bring the living bread of Jesus Christ. We have partnership with two ministries, uh, one in El Salvador, one in Guatemala. In Guatemala, it's Iglesia Galilea, where they're actually trying to have protein for people who don't have much protein to eat. So they've started fish farms, tilapia fish farms, and they're teaching the people how to farm their own fish so they can have protein to eat. And this October, we have a team going in, it's October, right, going to Guatemala again. And if you're like, man, I'd love to go see that and also be part of a building project or sharing Jesus, we go to different parts of the world to bring the love of Jesus. But, but there's that practical food side of it. That's part of what you do. All these are ministries that you're a part of. So what if we 
Follow God's call to clothe the naked. To help clothe people who need clothing. And we also offer the covering and the life of Jesus Christ. Because in Matthew 25, 36, Jesus said, I needed clothes and you clothed me. Because you did it for the least of these, my brothers and my sisters. And our response to the needs around the world is, but what can I do? It's such a big challenge. What, what's my next step, my baby step? Well, we have a clothes closet. And so, and so I would challenge you, you know, once a month or once a quarter, go through your clothes and listen closely. Find, some, you know, find a few nice things that you aren't wearing and wash them before you bring them over, you know? And iron them and, 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 and bring them to our team like you were giving them to your best friend or to your grandson or your granddaughter or your son or your daughter because these are people Jesus loves. And bring those things and bring them out and then maybe, maybe come and help serve. We need, more, we need more men right now on the men's side of the, of the clothing closet. But, but come and say, how can I get involved? How, if I'm available, can I serve? Maybe God stirs your heart. You say, that's my next baby step. I'm gonna get involved in that. Or, or once a month or once a quarter, I'm gonna pack some nice good clothes up and I'm gonna bring them over and bless someone through that. There's more things that we're doing. Do you know that we have a ministry called Dress a Girl? And the Dress a Girl ministry, these are over 30 people at Shoreline who make dresses for little girls and for their moms. And they look, and they're, here's, here's a little girl dress. And you get some little girls who are getting maybe, maybe their first new dress in their life. It comes from Shoreline Church, from some of you. And then their mom gets a bigger version. <laughs> now, now you've got to check this out. You gotta, you know, some of you are going, I didn't, I didn't even know we did that. Well, we do. We're, we're just, uh, we've finished a, a full year now. And in the first year, over 30 volunteers involved, and you don't have to know how to sew. You can do other stuff to help out. And sometimes they do it at their homes on their own. Sometimes they come together. But listen to this, over 30 volunteers have provided dresses for moms and daughters in over 10 countries, and listen to this, 882 dresses last year from Shoreline Church. This, some of you are going, I didn't even know we did that. Is that allowed? Yes, we, this, this is what we do. When God gets a hold of your heart and begins to change your heart, you care and you want to get engaged and you do something. What if we provided clean and accessible water for those who don't have any. And we offer the living water of Jesus Christ. You, you, know, you, go to, you and I go to the, to the kitchen and we turn the faucet on and there's water. And the water is relatively clear and the water is drinkable. And, we, and, and it, that's a miracle. It's a miracle. If you come from places in Africa and other places where there, there are, there's no water that can be drawn that's clean and so they spend sometimes children spend hours a day going somewhere and drawing water or getting water out of th that is dirty and filthy and sometimes poisoned water and they bring it to their families because that's all they have now we aren't we don't right now we don't have a water ministry at shoreline church but our partner who does the treasures the solar powered audio bibles uh, our, our partner world world mission has a water division called zoe waters and you want to see how, how fancy these wells are that's a well you go that's not very fancy yeah, but that piping is drilled down far enough to reach clean, fresh water. And it's right near a village. And it brings life. And when they get this, and Zoe means life, when they get the life of that water, we also talk with them about the life of Jesus Christ. And some of you might say, man, well, why doesn't Shoreline find a village somewhere and partner and send a team over and help drill a well? We could. We just need people to say, let's do it. You know, we need people to say, I want to be part of that. And I'll give some money, and I'll give some prayer, and I'll give some time, and I'll be part of that. So we have a place out in the courtyard where people can sign up. If we get 20 people to say, I want to know more about that, then we go, let's check it out. We can do all kinds of things, but it's going to come out of the life of God's people in this church. Instead of saying, what could we do? We say, what can we do? Let's get involved in this. Let's do it. What if we cared for the earth and were stewards of God's creation and helped others see the good creator who made this world and who loves this world? The very beginning in Genesis 2, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it, and listen to this, and to take care of it. God's people who are filled with the Holy Spirit look at this creation and say, this is God's, this is, this is my Father's world. This is, God made this world. And he says, you be, you be stewards of it. Care for it. You know what one of the biggest hobbies is in America? Gardening. Those of you that have gardens that care for your gardens, when you do, you are living out what God called the people to do at the very beginning. Tend for the earth. Take good care of it. Make your garden beautiful, whether it's flowers or vegetables or fruits, and actually say, God, you, you mean that could be part of, yeah, and, and then if you've got some extra stuff, if you've got some extra, you know, maybe, you're, maybe you're growing stuff, so if you have extra stuff, you know, 
either here or some other ministry in the area, bring it to a ministry in the area and say, hey, here's some fresh whatever. We, I've, I've got, you know, 47 times more tomatoes than I need or whatever it is. Then find someone, but, but just share that. Share the plenty of what God has given to you in that way. Like, the, like my friend did, pick up trash when you're walking around. We're talking about starting a creation care community. Pastor Nate's led us with lots of new communities that are getting started, and one group that we're talking about is a creation care community. People that say, I want to just be part of, get it with other people and do things that care for creation. Get creative. Come up with eight, five, you know, five, 10, 15 things that you could do as a group periodically and go do it. We haven't started that yet because we don't have a leader for it and enough people, but if you go, man, that sounds exciting, go find wherever it is in the courtyard. I don't know where it is. It's out there somewhere. Wander around say, hey, where do I sign up to get part of a community that wants to get together you know, periodically and care for creation? But that's ways we can live that out. What if we protected life from the womb to the grave and we offered the grace-filled life found in Jesus? In Psalm 139, beginning in verse 13, we read these words. The psalmist is talking about himself and he says to God, for you created my inmost being. God, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And he goes on to talk about, God, you saw me even in that secret place of my mother's womb. How do, how do we care for life from beginning to end? He said, well, what can I do? What's a baby step? Well, we talked last week a lot about helping single mothers, adoption, foster care ministries. If you weren't here last week, and I'm not gonna go, uh, Josh Butler did a great job talking about that, but if you weren't here, watch the sermon. And there's a place out in the courtyard where you can say, I wanna learn more about adoption and foster care ministries. I wanna become part of that and get engaged in it and help us make a difference that way. What if we protected the vulnerable, the captive, and the trapped? And we pointed them to the one who sets us free from darkness, the enemy, and sin. What if we thought about those people that, that oftentimes don't get thought about and get forgotten? And God has a lot to say about that all through the Bible. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, we read these words. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality, he accepts no bribes. There's, there's, there's no bribing or tricking God, right? He defends the cause of the fatherless, and the widow, he loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those that are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. He, he, God is saying, these are the most unprotected groups in that time in history. These are people that just didn't have any protection and any rights. He says, but, but if you're, God says, but if you're alive, if my spirit's alive in your heart and growing in you, you're gonna care about those who are widows, who are fatherless, who are wandering, who need someone to care about them. Your heart will go out to them because God's heart goes out to them. He said, well, what could I do? How do I take a step to help those kind of people? Well, there's lots of different things we can do. Little baby steps. Adoption and foster care we talked about already. A kinship center is a foster care and adoption group that actually meets here at Shoreline Church. You can go out in the courtyard, learn more about that. Say, what's happening here at Shoreline? Anti-human trafficking we talked about last week. But, 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 and one of the ways that you can actually, one of the best ways to keep children from being trafficked is to have them become healthy and strong. One of the best ways to do that is to, join, is to find one of these little boys and girls through Compassion International or some other ministry and sponsor them. And, it's, and it doesn't go through Shoreline, it just goes to those other ministries. And, it, and, and, and you can find one little girl or one little boy and share in their life and pray for them and walk with them through, you know, walk with them through life. And, and these kids are much less likely to end up in the margins of society, they end up being trafficked because they have food, they have clothing, they have education, and they have spiritual training. And that's what those, that's what those kind of programs offer to children. It's amazing. And, and then, what if we reached out to, our, to the forgotten people in our community? What if we identified those people that just are often forgotten? And, and then we, we could point them to the one who never forgets them, who always remembers them, who always cares about them. And, and here's the key. Out, also out in the courtyard is a whole booth... <coughs> for Organic Outreach International. And what we do is we're bringing together the spiritual gospel of Jesus Christ and the physical care of any sort, and we always bring those things together. So if you want to learn about how we're bringing that spiritual part of the good news of Jesus through the other ministries, go by and visit the Organic Outreach table out there as well. And just, just wander out there and take a couple minutes to say, Lord, is there something stirring in my heart that I can engage in? Uh, in, in Matthew 5, uh, 25, 36, we read this. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Uh, the forgotten, the outcast, those that are marginalized. 
And, and so we're, we're starting all kinds of new ministries at Shoreline and continue to develop ones that we already have. We're starting a prison ministry to women and to men. That's through our care ministry under, under Pastor Dennis. And if you say, man, I'd love to get involved in ministry to men or women who are in prison, that's something we're doing. Go investigate that. We're starting a new mental health ministry with people who are dealing with, with mental health issues and eventually with their family members, a support network and care and walking with them because they oftentimes get marginalized. That's a brand new ministry developing at Shoreline Church. And by the way, all these ministries I'm talking about, you say, well, how, how can we do all that? Because week by week, you pray, you give, you serve, we're in this together. And Shoreline can do those kind of things and so much more because our people in Shoreline are engaged and God may stir your heart to become part of this. But be praying for our mental health ministry and you want to, may want to investigate that. We have a lay counseling center. I think we have 12 or 14 trained lay counselors. Now, these aren't like licensed therapists, but they are trained very rigorously. They're vetted, and those people then, we have, and this is actually our offices in downtown Monterey, so that people that can go in for this lay counseling don't have to walk on the campus. They can actually go somewhere that's, that's removed where they feel like it's very private. Uh, we've got a couple offices indoors. And you say, well, how do, how do we afford to have those offices and all that? Because of your generosity. You're like, I didn't know we did all this stuff. Know it. We do. You do. This is your church. And so we have a lay counseling trained people that, that Pastor Dennis and a group of other counselors have spent time training, and they're also trained that if they get over their head and it goes past the lay care to, you know, where they need a professional, they know right when to say, I'm over my head, let me get the right person to step in. And anyone you know in Monterey County who has a need and can't afford to do it, that's provided for them. Because that's what we do. Because Jesus cares about the marginalized and the forgotten and the left out. We have a team that does hospital visits. And you can go see Yolande in the care, in the care, care ministry booth. We have a care, uh, people that go visit at care centers. So elderly folks that are forgotten and, and not, nobody's visiting and caring for, we as, sh as shorelanders go and care for them. There's a women's shelter in the area. So we have teams that go to the women's shelter and they teach life skills and they lead Bible studies and they do games and they build relationships and they pour into these women that are on the margins that are often forgotten. And we let them know as we care for them that Jesus loves them and he's there for them. We have the Change Your World boxes and, and the treasures that we're sharing all over the world. We do Operation Christmas Child for children in other parts of the world that at Christmas time they get gifts, but also the story of Jesus. Angel Tree, where we care for children of, whose parents are incarcerated in jail, and we help make sure that they have a Christmas, and we share the message of Jesus. We provide backpacks for children that are going to head off to school with none of the supplies they need. And it goes on and on and on. Baby step after baby step after baby step. But here's the thing. You get enough people taking enough baby steps, it becomes a movement of the power of the spirit of the living God. Amen? Amen. You get enough drops and drips of goodness and righteousness and justice. It becomes a roaring river of God's presence and glory and power. And we get to be part of that. That's amazing. That's a gift. That's a privilege. So I want to pray right now, and as I pray, I'm going to invite the worship team to come forward, and they're going to lead us in a song just, just to let you reflect and think and say, God, what is it that you're doing through me that I can continue, and what is it, God, that you want to do through me? What's my next step? What's my baby step? What's my drip? What's my drop? What's my next big step if God moves you? Let's pray together. <coughs> Living God, we come before you, and we thank you that when we were orphans and wandering, and we all were spiritually, you came and picked us up and called us your own. When we were wandering like sheep without a shepherd, you, the good shepherd, put us on your shoulders and you brought us home. And Lord, for those of us who have come to the cross and received Jesus Christ and been forgiven of our sins and filled with your spirit, Lord, for those of us who have met you face to face, change us day by day and moment by moment. And let us take those little steps day by day that show your justice, that show your righteousness, that show your face and your glory and your goodness. Let us celebrate the things we're already doing. Let us take bigger steps than we've taken before. Let us take fresh new steps into faithfulness. And Lord Jesus, in the quietness of this moment, as we sing together, as we listen to these words, we pray that you will speak to our hearts. Give us a vision of what you might do in and through us those next steps we can take. Speak to our hearts, Lord. We pray this for the glory of Jesus.